Imagine you're out at the field with a group of friends. They've got five, six, seven batteries remaining and you're sat there with just one left. You've brought a charger, you've brought a power bank, but it only charges one at a time. Do you go home early or do you pull out the Toolkit RC M6 Pro AC? That's right. This new charger from Toolkit RC has got AC adapter built into it. You can charge two 6S batteries at once and that should give you enough power to keep up with all your friends while they're flying and never have to leave the flying field early. Let's go. Moving around to the back of the box and we can see the two main differences between the Pro and the V2 version is the output power and the fact that the Pro version also has a wireless charger included as well. I guess then it's time that we move a little bit closer to the table or to the desk and unbox this thing and see what exactly comes inside. So first of all, you get a Toolkit RC business card. You also get a bit of a quick start instruction manual. You get sector. Now this was something I forgot to mention on the previous Toolkit RC review video, but this is good. It's not, not a touch screen, but it helps protect that screen and your investment. So removing it from its wrapper and we can see that we've got two 6S ports on the front and it's very similar I have a very annoying rattly shelf behind me so if you can hear that I do apologize so we can see that it comes with the the same sort of uniform layout as the one that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago, the ATS version. Moving around to the back again, it's all very similar. So what this means is, this is great if you are somebody like my wife, for example. She hates any sort of change. She's kept the same mobile phone for years because she doesn't want to change the interface that she uses. She gets that stressed by it. And this is gonna have exactly the same interface. It's got the same sort of dial. It's got the same button. It's all laid out in exactly the same way. So if you was to get the 8S charger and think, right, well, what I could do with now is a couple more ports to charge a few 6S's at the same time, or even a third 6S if you're not charging an 8S at the time, this will make your life quite easy and straightforward. I'm not somebody like that. I quite like different systems and different menus, but I appreciate there are people out there that uh, that don't. And like I say, I live with one, so uh, I know exactly how some of you guys are feeling. So hopefully that light's dimmed a little bit uh, for you to be able to see this screen a little bit better now. Oh, there we go. If we do it like that, that should help you guys no end. Now I noticed when we plugged it in, this lit up, I didn't actually notice that before. Um, what I could do with doing now is grabbing a battery. We got us a 6S 300, sorry, 1350 mAh, 150C pizza battery from CNHL. These are my go-to packs for five inch freestyle, by the way, for anybody who asks. Let's plug this in and uh, take a look at some of the menus and we'll even start it off charging as well. Because at the end of the day, it's a charger and uh, yeah, Oh, I see. So it lights up on one side to indicate there's a battery there. I mean, you're going to see it, but hey, I like it anyway. So we can see straight away on here, it's given us a readout of what these cells are at. So 3.8, 3.79, 3.8, so on and so forth. We did balance it before the, we'd uh, finished with it the last time that we used it. So glad to see that uh, this is a relatively healthy pack. It still gets beaten nonetheless tells us it's on standby mode uh, and I'm going at this blind by the way I've not looked at any manuals whatsoever so I'm just going at this blind and seeing exactly what I can do what I can't do and uh, if I get stuck we'll look at the manuals together but I'm 
pretty sure we should be okay. Now if we push down on the circle or the rotary dial here, brings up this menu, tells you or asks you, should I say, what battery type it is. You can set it to auto for the cells so you don't make a mistake and say it's a 5S when it's a 4S and so on and so forth. You've got different modes. So you've got charge, discharge, storage, and destroy. We're not going to use that destroy one today. Discharge mode, end voltage, discharge current, and then you can, down here, look, you can switch between battery number one. Just make sure we're still in focus, we are. Between battery number one and battery number two. So what else? If we now go to charge and go to battery type, you've got LiPo, LIHV, LIFE, Lion, LTO, Nickel Metal, ni I can never say that word, Nickel Metal Hydrate, PB Power, UAV Bat. So the UAV Bat, like we looked at last time, is your DJI batteries. You need an adapter for it. It doesn't come with that, but you can get them off Amazon or eBay for pennies. And you can then charge Mavic with it. Mavic 1, Mavic Air, sorry, Mavic Air 1, Mavic 1, 2, 3, a Phantom, an Inspire, an FPV, and so on and so forth. Sad news today that DJI officially ended support for the Phantom 4, one of my favorite camera drones ever. So if we can just take a moment's silence and appreciate the Phantom 4 in the comments down below. As far as I'm aware, it's still the only consumer drone with a mechanical shutter. And then we go press press that button to take us back a couple of times and we go back to this screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually charge a battery because it's a battery charger. So we're going to leave it on auto cells and we're going to go to, so we've got charge, just, yeah, okay. End voltage is 4.20 because it's not an LIHV. Charge current, uh, pause the video right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Charge the video right now and leave a comment down below. Tell me what the charging current should be for a 1350 mAh battery. And in the meantime, while you've got that paused, I'm going to set it. Now, underneath the comment that you predicted, let me know if you got it right. And it changes to red to indicate that we are now charging. And you can see now on each one of these, exactly what the current is doing for each one of the cells. Tells you your charging rate here. Tells you your battery voltage here. Tells you how long it's been charging for, how many milliamps or how many amp hours, sorry. And then if we just scroll that across, it tells you the internal resistance of each cell. This is good to know if you think you've got a damaged battery. I'm not gonna go into detail as to how we would do that on this particular video. But if you do want to know, we can do a tutorial, not a problem. And that is really the majority of the things that you need to know about this charger. It is as simple to use as the previous one. You can charge up to two 6S batteries at the same time. You can discharge, destroy, or put into storage mode. I do like this, this is good. And the reason that this is good is because Toolkit RC um, balance ports are actually different than the other chargers that I've used. So when I got the first one, I'd actually plugged it in as I normally would, and uh, it, it wasn't charging, and I was I was baffled. I even had to reach out and ask some, have I done something wrong, or is there some, some sort of problem with it? And ultimately, the answer was, no, absolutely not. It's just our balance ports work in a different way. So it's good to see that once you've pressed it, this actually changes to know that it's working. I mean, the rest of the data on the screen will give that away as well. Now, hopefully, because I'm recording this now with a microphone in the studio, rather than having to go away and record it elsewhere, hopefully you can hear the noise of the fan in the background as I'm talking, because that's as loud as this charger is gonna get. I do hope you can hear it. I don't know how well this microphone will cancel out noise. So if you can hear it, brilliant. If you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about, then it means that you can't hear it. But we'll soon find out when we go and check the recording back. Now, let me grab my phone and we'll check that uh, wireless charging option. Wireless charging should be dead simple. It should be a case of just pop your phone on top 
and it should then start to charge. And mine is, let me just increase the brightness of my phone. I have my phone brightness on minimum because uh, I really could do with a new phone. But you can see there it's lit up, which means it's charging. And if I move it around a little bit, there you go. You can actually see the charging icon is there. So it is charging. And that's it. That's all you have to do for the wireless charging. So that's charging a LiPo battery and also charging my phone at the same time. And just as I was leaving the studio, I've done some product photography for Toolkit RC and um, I'd left the charger turned on so that what I could do was take pictures of the screen and information screens and in some sort of high res capacity. And uh, just as I was leaving, it beeped at me and I didn't realize uh, what that was. I wasn't aware of this function. I'm sure a lot of chargers have got it. I just wasn't aware of it. Came back, had a quick look at it and it says, turn off to save energy toolkit RC. So really nice little message there. I don't know if it beeps more than once or if it's just like a one time only thing, but regardless, it's a really nice thing to actually have, uh, just to remind you the amount of times I leave stuff like turned on, plugged in, um, unbelievable. Um, so to have that reminder, that's that's brilliant. And like I say, you may be aware of it. It was something that I wasn't aware was built into this. So, you know, we're all learning. Like I say, I'm a pilot first and a YouTuber second. I don't claim to be an expert. I've just done this for a long time.